Hello friends. So I got a subscriber question. If you don't know what a subscriber question is, do me a favor, just give me a few seconds. Basically something I do all the time is I try to create videos based on your questions. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you have a question about real estate investing, just leave it in a comment. Any of my videos, leave it in a comment. I'm the only one that looks at these and thus uh, will do my best to uh, get an answer for you. So today's subscriber questions comes from an individual who already has four rental properties. Uh, this individual manages them themselves, but has realized that it's time to get professional managers. You know, that could happen for lots of different reasons. Uh, maybe there's a move involved. Uh, maybe they've realized that the time being spent managing four is preventing them from getting five or six. Uh, if you know anything about our story, again, that we outline in the book that's over my right shoulder, uh, available on Amazon, we've had a property manager since day one, right? We chose a market two and a half hours away, and uh, well, that's one way, right? Two, so five-hour day. Um, but uh, what's really important about this is not only did we have property managers from day one, but we fired the first five. So I have some pretty strong opinions about what, what works and what doesn't work, and I thought I would put them here. Uh, for this particular video, I thought I would talk about five ideas I would have. And, and first off, the realization that, you know, property management firms are nothing but, you know, salespeople in the beginning looking to get more units under management, right? It's how they pay their bills. So realize a lot of their conversations are going to sound good. And, and sometimes you don't know until you test them. But here are the things that I try to weed out or I would try to figure out in the beginning. First and foremost, and most important to me is to understand the owner or the principal, right? Is the owner or principal a broker, right? A real estate broker? Are they a money lender, right? What is their prime source of income? I've met too many people where property management is their side piece. And in my experience, it works out great for some time until their main business takes off. This bit us really hard when we were working with a team for a year, I think a couple of years and then the crash happened, this particular individual and his team started getting lots of REO units. And these REO units were coming with significant upfront fees and then commissions when they sold. So guess what they did? They put 99% of their focus on getting more of those and processing those. And they were probably working 100 hour weeks at the time. I get it. But my property management business and tenants fell off a cliff. And um, that's not okay. So I'll never work with another team where the owner is not an investor first. I would prefer them not to be anything else. I want them to be a real estate investor. And I want them to own, you know, units. I don't want to hear, hey, they own their primary home, right? If the owner of the company doesn't see value in investing in their market, I wonder why they're property managers, right? So that's, again, my bias, my experience for sure. But hey, my, I was asked the question, so I'm giving you my answers. Uh, next is, and again, you got to realize a lot of these are going to be, are going to sound good with the answer, but you're, you're, when you talk to multiple property managers, you'll start to see the differences. So how do you attract good tenants? Notice I said good tenants, right? And then maybe have them tell you what a good tenant is, right? Is it uh, how much they cover rent? Is it lack of evictions? Is it college educated? I don't know, right? What is it, right? What do they think it is? And again, you're just trying to listen. Uh, I don't really think there's a right or wrong answer when they respond. You're trying to test them to see what they say. And, um, you know, does it make sense, right? You know, for example, is their idea of attracting good tenants posting a one-liner on Craigslist saying first month free? That's probably not the right answer, right? Um, but again, that's, that's the idea. Here's a test for you. Lots of people talk about how to get rid of bad tenants. And that's not that it's irrelevant, but it's sort of documented in California law, right? You post a three day, you know, you do all of those things. Um, I would rather talk about how you keep the good tenants, right? Te you know, if, if one of my tenants pays on time for 12 months in a row, right? 24 months in a row, what are we going to do for them? We're going to thank them and stick them with a rent increase or are we going to do something nice like, I don't know, paint the front door or, uh, you know, buy them a rose bush? I don't know. What, what are we going to do? Because I promise you in this business, it's far more important to take care of the good tenants than the bad. I don't know what the number is, but probably 95% of my tenants are good to great. They pay on time or close to on time. 
two to three percent need to be reminded that they owe rent and then pay. Uh, and then a couple are problems, right? That's just, you know, you're in a people business. So that's kind of how it works. Uh, so figure out that. Uh, the other thing I'd like to get a handle of is sample reports, right? They could go ahead and redact an owner's name to protect them, of course. But I want to make sure I understand their reports, right? Sh send me a sample of what I'm going to get monthly. And tell me the intervals, right? Do I have online access? Do all of these things. Uh, I've seen some reporting systems that are kind of on a cash basis and others on an expense. And, and I'm an accountant by training with an MBA. And some of them, I can't figure the ins and outs. And if it's too hard to figure out, what that tells me is, you know, not that they are hiding something, but they could be hiding something. And, you know, that's enough of a yellow or red flag for me. Uh, and then the last one for me would be, you know, how can we communicate, right? And this individual has four units and looking to get more, you know, with four units, I would probably ask to talk to someone once a week for 15 minutes. You know, could we have a call every Monday at 830? Or can we have a call every Friday at four, right? Whatever it is for you. Maybe it's Wednesday at one. I don't know. But figure out a time that you could talk. And again, 15 minutes should be plenty. And sometimes the phone calls will be, nope, everybody paid, no maintenance. Great. Other times it will be this or that. So again, communication is very important. Certainly the first 90 days to get the rhythm of the operation and so they can figure you out because every owner is different, right? That's something we need to appreciate. Property managers and property management firms could be managing th you know, hundreds of owners for sure, thousands of units. So they need to figure you out as well. So make sure they understand you, how you like your data, how you like to be communicated. Are you a text person, phone? You know, uh, do you want to do it in person? I don't know. Uh, but figure those things out. So those are the things that I would think about if I was looking to um, you know, get a new property manager. I hope that helps. If that doesn't answer your question, please leave a more detailed one below and I will try again. Take care.